Hi, welcome to a series of webinars on optical network technologies and protocols. This is your friend Brahmanand in the journey of learning. The main objectives of these series of webinars is to discuss about SDS Sonite, WDM, OTN, element management layer, NML network management layer in reference to optical networks and also to discuss about project management in optical networks development and testing environment. In the last couple of sessions we discussed the objectives or the requirements of SDH and also we discussed about the layered architecture of SDH. Today in this session we shall discuss about the overhead bytes and their functions in the STM uh, frame. Overhead can be categorized into two types. One is suction overhead, the second is path overhead. In the last session, we discussed what is the need for regenerator section and the importance of overhead in managing uh, the regenerator section. And similarly, multiplex section overhead manages multiplex section and also we discussed why do we need overhead for multiplex section. Similarly, higher order path overhead is for managing the client signals whose mapping is for VC4 or VC3 and lower head path overhead is for VC11, VC12, VC2, etc. We know STM frame consists of 9 rows and 2 centi columns. For example, in the STM1 frame, the region of the section overhead is placed in the first 3 rows and first 9 columns in the STM1 frame. Similarly, multiplex section overhead is placed in the rows 5 to 9 in the columns 1 to 9 and also we have administrative unit pointers which points to the virtual container payload is placed in row number 4 the number of overhead bytes used for uh, multiplex suction and region suction varies based on the capacity of the line rate. For example, for STM0, uh, the number of columns used for uh, suction overhead is 3, whereas for STM1, the number of columns used for section overhead is 9. So the number of bytes also used in each of the layer rate increases based on the line rate. As we can see here that for STM0 for example A1 byte is 1, A2 byte is 1 and for STM1 they are increased to 3 for A1 and 3 for A2. Similarly, uh, data communication channels which we are going to discuss in multiplex section overhead also varies based on the synchronous transport module. Similarly, for STM4, the number of overhead columns increases by the factor of 4 in the multiple of 4 for STM1 we had 9 similarly for STM4 we have 36 columns of section overhead and similarly the number of overhead bytes uh, in these sections do increase in the same multiple of 4 and uh, so as the case with STM16. So the number of overhead bytes 
uh, columns in HTM16 increases to 144 columns. Let's quickly discuss those bytes being used in regenerative section override and multiplex section override and understand the importance of each override byte in these uh, uh, sections. First and the most important is the framing bytes. A1 and A2 bytes sit in the first row of a regenerative section overhead. These bytes designate the start of the HTM1 frame. If there is a transmitter and a receiver, when a signal is received by the receiver from the transmitter, the receiver understands the beginning of the phone, uh, beginning of the frame only by looking at A1 and A2 bytes. If they are valid, then this receiver considers for synthesizing it. If it is invalid, it will raise corresponding alarms. A1 will have an hexadecimal value of F6 and similarly A2 will have hexadecimal value of 28. So A1 will have uh, double one, double one zero, double one zero and similarly A2 will have double zero one zero one zero double zero the one of the key alarm uh, alarm which get raised if we don't receive these uh, uh, bytes is regenerative suction loss of frame if I don't receive proper valid binary values of A1 A2 at the receiver side then the receiver will raise an alarm called regenerative suction loss of frame. We shall going to discuss about each and every uh, alarm in the SDH in a more detailed session uh, when we discuss about the fault management. The next byte in the regenerative suction is J0 which is placed in the seventh column and the first row in regenerative suction over it the regenerative suction. This byte is used for regenerative suction trace connection verification means that when a transmitter is transmitting some data to the receiver it, it keeps ch sending 16 bytes fixed connection verification code or the frame to the receiver. So receiver as long as it is getting that fixed regenerative suction trace from the transmitter or in the vice versa then it means that they are in connection. So receiver understands its intended connection with the transmitter only when it receives a valid region uh, suction trace in J0 byte. If you, want to if you want to know more about J0 byte and uh, region suction uh, uh, trace connection verification, you can refer to class 3 in G831 uh, standard of uh, ITUT. This is a typically uh, what is the uh, region uh, suction trace for the STM1. This will have sequential 16 bytes of uh, connection uh, verification trace running between transmitter and the receiver. The first bit in each byte would have the sequence as mentioned here. This will indicate that receiver will understand that uh, as long as it is getting this particular code as part of the regenerative suction trace, it understands that that is the beginning of regenerative, uh, regenerative suction trace. So this particular word is considered as a frame alignment signal by the receiver. And from bits in the column, uh, in the byte one, 
from bits uh, 2 to bits 8 are used for cyclic redundancy uh, 7 a calculation over previous 7. <clears throat> if you want to know about cyclic redundancy check there is a lot of information in over the net and as well as in the YouTube you can refer to it. Even otherwise I would be uh, presenting a webinar on cyclic redundancy check uh, after a while. So the word whichever is carried in the bit 2 to bit 16 from bit byte 2 to byte 16 would be equal and to T50 character, ASCII character. And please mind that when this has to be set on both transmitter and receiver, that is when they can talk to each other for the intended connection. If at all any one of these uh, equipments don't carry this proper trace information, one of the key alarms which get raised is regenerator section trace identifier mismatch. If there is a frame received by the receiver and if, if the connection verification trace is not as expected then it will raise or flog off an alarm called as regenerator section trace identifier mismatch. Next B1 byte B1 byte is a, a bit interlude parity, even parity uh, byte uh, placed in region section overheads. Uh, it's placed in the row 2 of uh, column 1 in the, uh, in the region section. This byte is basically used to check the transmission errors over the previous frame in the region section. If there is a any transmission errors between a transmitter and a receiver, this is the byte which carries the degree of errors in the previous frame. You can refer to G707 for more details on bit interlude parity. Of course, I would be uh, because there are uh, lots of uh, a bit interlude parity checks being done uh, for regenerative section, multiplex section, path overheads. So I would be having a separate session on bit interlude parity. If these byte carry those information uh, between transmitter and receiver and if there are any bit errors between the transmitter and the receiver the typical alarms which get raised are regenerated success, uh, regenerated section excessive error and regenerated section uh, degraded alarm. So if bits errors are more at the receiver and it will communicate the transmitter uh, with these alarms stating that uh, the re uh, receiver is getting um, bit errors. And the byte E1 is used for regenerative suction order wire. This is one of the byte which helps the uh, field engineers to communicate between uh, regenerators in the uh, transmission network. So this acts as a 64 kbps voice channels uh, for transmitters between the regenerators. This is very helpful to de debug the issues in the region section um, by way of communication between two operators and the byte D1 to D3 are used for region section data communication channels. This is one of the um, um, one of these bytes are used for network management function and we will discuss about network management system uh, in a series of uh, other webinars uh, wherein we will also discuss about data communication channels but just to um, give you an um, high level view on these bytes these are the bytes which carry 
the entire networks <coughs> sorry provisioning security control performance monitoring commands between the network element and the network management system so these 182 kbps channel is used as a om channel uh, between network elements and the network management systems there will be comms alarms raised if network management cannot access the network element through these uh, data communication channels comms alarms will be raised We'll discuss about these alarms specifically in our fault management webinars. F1 byte is also similar to E1, but this is basically used for data communication. If there needs a file transmission between a two regenerators by the operators, then these this particular byte can be configured to transfer. Uh, you know any data between uh, the provisioned regenerators. So those are the functions about the regenerator section over it. Now moving on to multiplex section. Multiplex section. I mean multiplex section will also have uh, almost all the bytes uh, similar to what we discussed in the regenerator section. We'll have uh, B2 bytes which is used for bit interlude parity BIF24 it's an even parity so don't get confused about what is this bit interlude parity as of now just for now let's understand that these are the bytes which are used to communicate the uh, I mean uh, measure how many bits are gone wrong in the previous frame and communicate the same information to the receiver and uh, so basically this is these are used for transmission errors and if there are any bit errors this will these bytes also carry uh, alarms information in them typically multiplex section excessive alarms and multiplex section degraded alarm please note in, note one thing that in the region section we had only one byte for a bit interlude parity whereas for the multiplex section we have three bytes meant for a bit interlude parity that's why we call it as bit 24 means 24 bits whereas in the in the, in the region section we had bit 8 that's one byte e2 byte is the same as even byte that we discussed in the regional section how read this is also used for order wire but this is for communicating the wise channels between multiplexers and data communications are similar to what we discussed in the regional section over heads but the only thing is uh, it will have um, nine bytes of data communication channels so in total we would have 576 kbps uh, line running between the network and the network management system uh, and the functionalities of these bytes are similar to region section only the difference is these bytes are used specifically for managing uh, or to establish a data communication network uh, between um, uh, multiplex function and the network management system which manages these network elements <coughs> sorry a k1 k2 bytes are used for automatic auto, automatic uh, protection switching uh, we will discuss more about automatic uh, sp uh, protection switching in a separate uh, uh, webinar uh, wherein I would discuss at length about the different types of uh, protection schemes these bytes are used both uh, for a linear automatic protection switching protection and also ring uh, automatic automatic protection switching so if you want to know about automatic automatic protection switching in detail you can refer to g783 for linear protection and g841 841 
for ring protection and MSAS multiplex suction alarm indication signal and multiplex suction remote defect indication alarms are the ones which are carried in K1 and K2 bytes uh, during the protection so which we'll certainly discuss in separate session the next byte is M1 byte this is a multiplex suction remote error indication so this will carry the information as how many number of blacks were received at the re remote end so this will be the importance of the M1 byte will be discussed at length when we discuss about performance management so these are the information that uh, M1 byte carries between transmitter and receiver if all the um, uh, seven bits uh, from bit 2 to uh, bit 8 are 0 it means it is 0 bit violation and uh, similarly if it carries 0 0 double 1 triple 0 it means 24 bit violation it means that there were 24 blacks Error blacks observed in one multi in uh, in the last frame. Please make a note that bit one in the M1 is ignored. Similarly, S1 byte is used for synchronization status. The quality of the ST1 signal when used as synchronization and timing source. <coughs> this is one of the very unique byte in the STM1 frame which carries the kind of synchronization uh, it is working with. If there is a transmitter and the receiver, this byte indicates the receiver that this transmitter is aligned to what kind of synchronization source. See for example, if it indicates 0010 in bit 5 to 8 of this particular byte, it means that it is working with a clock source equivalent to G811. So, primary reference clock. So, similarly, if it carries 0100, it means that secondary supply unit A. We will discuss about these uh, uh, synchronization in a separate uh, session. Uh, I mean, the importance of this particular byte is it helps the receiver that, hey, come on, I am working and I am aligned to this particular clock. You can make use of it if you are aligned to lower quality source. Assume if receiver is working on low priority clock sources then if transmitter sends in its byte uh, s1 byte in the bits b5 to b8 if it sends 0010 as information then receiver understands that oh this transmitter is aligned to better quality clock than myself then this will tune to the clock received by the transmitter so it will start working by taking the reference from the transmitter so that is the advantage of s1 byte we'll have to discuss synchronization at length with reference to sth and also how uh, you know synchronization status messaging is shared between network elements in the linear networks and ring networks we shall discuss those in a separate session. SDH pointers, as we discussed, SDH pointers are placed in the in the section overhead uh, fourth column, fourth row. So, for example, for STM1, we have three H1 bytes, three H2 bytes, and three H3 bytes. These H1 and H2 bytes which are placed in the column 1 to 6 are 
those bytes which indicate the beginning of the payload which is J1. J1 is the path overhead, I mean uh, higher order path overhead which indicates the beginning of the payload itself. So these pointers are basically used to indicate the beginning of the payload. Now there is one more uh, advantage of this uh, payload which we will discuss in the next slide. Prior to that I want to uh, mention that these bytes will carry uh, you know from um, mm, values ranging from uh, 0 to uh, 782 in them. If H1 H2 byte, byte carry 0, if those two bytes carry the information uh, um, 0 from the bits 17 to 16 in H1 and H2, then it means that the payload is starts from the byte adjacent to this H3 byte. Similarly, we know that we have K2 byte sitting uh, here uh, in the uh, uh, fifth row, uh, ninth uh, column as we can uh, see it for STM1 uh, this particular byte so if this particular pointers carry the value of 87 it means that the payload is starting adjacent to K2 bytes the why I say because we have 261 columns of payload and please remember that the jump is by 3 bytes so if if the value is 0 then it start, start it starts adjacent to h3 byte if it is 1 then it starts 3 bytes after h3 byte So, 261 divided by 3 uh, which is equal to uh, 87. So, if the value is 87, then it means that it moves to the next row. And if these H1, H2 bytes don't carry the proper valid information if these bytes don't carry where information where exactly this j1 byte starts it means that i cannot trace my payload within my stream one frame so i am I'm, I'm lost i just lose the data so these are all the uh, alarms which get raised as part of mismatch in the pointers uh, administrative unit alarm indication signal attributor unit alarm indication signal administrative unit LOP uh, tributary unit LOP so if this is VC4 then AU AAS if it is uh, uh, TU3 uh, then uh, this will be TU AAS and uh, we'll discuss about these alarms in separate session so, as I said, one of the biggest advantages of these pointers is during the positive and neg negative justification. So, what is this positive justification? Assume that my payload, which is supposed to be mapped into my STM1 frame, is coming, it is delayed for some reason. Now, 
what I do is I'll just add some non-information bits adjacent to the H3 byte which will make the pointer incremented by 1 in the next frame and the subsequently when it moves when the payload moves this pointer value also will automatically increase so this positive justification happens when the payload is delayed with reference to the pointer value this is called as positive justification assume in a scenario wherein my I am getting the payload well before the speed of my STM1 frame then I need to place those that extra payload within my STM frame so that is the reason why I use this H3 byte so H3 bytes are used for negative justification during which time my real payload comes and sits in the S3 byte so uh, you know uh, this will help in managing the pointer value accordingly uh, this is one of the biggest advantages of uh, you know uh, S3 uh, pointers okay that those are the details about um, uh, section overhead and let's move on to path overhead we discussed in the last session what is this path and why should we how should we manage it and why should we manage it so path overhead is very very important because the trail or the uh, uh, or the path trail should be managed from its source till the destination and during which time we should also should be able to manage uh, performance of my path across the links so path overheads are created when the when we create a virtual container and it is uh, uh, also removed for analysis when it get demultiplexed so we have as we discussed we have two uh, path overheads one is higher order path overhead another one is lower order path overhead J1 byte is in, is is the virtual container path trace byte. This is the byte which will transmit repeatedly some bytes, which was which is which helps both the transmitter and receiver that they are connected so this helps in access pointer identification so we have seen that uh, our pointers points to this particular byte which is the beginning of the payload and this particular uh, byte uh, works in a multi uh, frame uh, structure uh, which will carry uh, access point identifier which is known to both transmitter and receiver which helps in uh, verifying their continued connection between the two and same like uh, what we discussed in uh, a regenerative suction overhead uh, J0 byte these bytes help uh, by communicating some of the alarms uh, between uh, you know two multiplexing devices so higher order path trace identifier mismatch is for VC4 and lower, lower order uh, path trace identifier mismatch is for VC3 so if the signal is mapped uh, and the signal is VC3 I mean if the virtual content is a VC3 uh, it will trigger lower order trace identifier mismatch if at all the access pointer identifier received by the receiver is wrong b3 path bit interlude parity code even parity 
This is same as what we discussed a B1 and B2 for regenerative suction overhead and multiplex suction overhead. The only difference is this bit or the byte uh, carries uh, the um, even parity uh, from source to destination and this is calculated over all the bits of the previous virtual container before scrambling and placed in B3 byte of the current frame. So uh, alarms are similar to what we discussed earlier. Uh, if there are excessive errors, it will trigger HP excessive. If it is degraded, HP degraded and uh, loader path excessive and degraded both even for VC3. Uh, so we'll discuss about these alarms in a separate session. And C2 byte indicates the mapping type in the VCN contains the binary values. So what it means is I should know what kind of information is carried in my STM1 frame. The intended transmitters and receiver should have this proper signal label because this is the one <coughs> which indicates <coughs> sorry this is the one which indicates what kind of mapping structure was used. Uh, you know, for different mapping structure, we have, you know, different uh, values which are incorporated into the C2 byte. So, we can see here, uh, you know, if this carries this particular uh, uh, hexadecimal code of uh, uh, 15, it means that it is FTDI mapping. And uh, if it is 17, it is HDL. And similarly, uh, you know, if it is um, uh, 8.2.3, <coughs> 10 gigabit Ethernet frames, then it is 1A. So, this signal label should be known to both transmitter and receiver because the receiver, after seeing the signal label only, it will deep multiplex it correctly. And these are all the alarms. Uh, HPAS, LPAS, H HP unequipped and uh, um, label mismatch, uh, path label mismatch alarms uh, get raised uh, if there is no proper uh, labeling between the transmitter and receiver. Assume if C2 in the transmitted STM1 frame um, is uh, say for example um, 1A, hexadecimal value of 1A and the receiver uh, expect or uh, uh, expect the mapping to be something else then it means that it cannot demultiplex it unless and until the signal label is same that is the um, advantage of uh, signal labeling given uh, uh, path status by this is uh, you know um, <clears throat> you know uh, virtual indicate uh, you know the quality or the uh, um, performance uh, of uh, the path back to the transmitter so bit 1 to bit 4 will indicate uh, uh, if there is any uh, errors uh, it will indicate back to the transmitter a remote error indication and if there is any faults then if there are any alarms it will indicate a remote defect indication and so on and this particular uh, uh, you know byte g1 byte is also used uh, in a, a different uh, way uh, through enhanced uh, uh, remote defect indication uh, some of the manufacturers do support uh, this way of signaling in the g1 byte which specifically indicates instead of just generally indicating that there is a remote defect indication in the remote I mean uh, observed at the remote path uh, I am able to mention the transmitter clearly what was the kind of uh, remote defect indication whether it was a path label mismatch or loss of pointer or trace identifier mismatch or unequipped so these kind of specific uh, remote defect indi indication uh, information can be uh, sent back to the transmitter uh, by using this particular byte. 
So if you are interested in knowing uh, more about uh, this particular byte, you can refer to G707 and G783 of ITUT. And path user, uh, user channel F2 is same as what we discussed in F1. This is for data communication uh, between the path terminating equipments. And uh, H4 byte is the position and sequence indicator byte. <coughs> it will indicate uh, in the path overhead, uh, this is indicates, uh, you know, uh, multi frame indicator which we will discuss it uh, in a separate session when we uh, discuss about alarms the advantage of h4, h4 byte uh, we shall uh, discuss so uh, this is um, mm, very useful when we have vc3 vc4 uh, concatenation and uh, loss of multi frame is the alarm which gets raised uh, if we lost yes, uh, this particular uh, position and uh, sequence indicator byte and path user channel F3 is same as F2 and K3 uh, we discussed about K1 and K2 byte with reference to multiplex suction overhead a similar byte exists in the higher order path overhead this is basically used for the same uh, I mean, automatic protection switching but uh, K1 and K2 are used in the multiplex section to protect a multi multiplex section. But whereas K3 byte is used for uh, automatic uh, protection switching, but it protects the path. So path level APS, uh, we use uh, K3 byte. And N1 is used for tandem uh, connection uh, monitoring. Uh, of contiguous concatenation of VC4, VC3 um, uh, levels. So, I'm going to have a separate webinar on tandem connection monitoring because it's a huge uh, topic for discussion. But just to give a uh, high level view, uh, if there is a, a multi operators in my uh, established end to end connection, then this particular byte helps in managing or uh, error monitoring in each and every operator's domain. So if I have two network element in one domain, one operator and the, it, uh, and the, uh, in the, in the signal passes through some other operator, say this is operator 2 and this is operator 1 and the signal comes back to the domain of uh, operator 1 then this part helps in understanding what is the error count uh, within a particular domain. So we'll discuss about this in a separate uh, uh, session. Uh, just for information, uh, let's understand that there are bytes which indicates the incoming error count. Uh, it, there are uh, there are bytes for indicating. Uh, you know, uh, there are bits uh, for indicating uh, uh, remote error uh, indication. Um, uh, see, these, by, these bits indicate the number of counts, but this indicates there is an error uh, in the uh, remote hand. And uh, similarly, uh, we have uh, bits for, uh, you know, um, uh, remote defect indication as well. So, uh, this would be uh, discussed uh, in a separate uh, session. Similar to the way how we have uh, uh, higher order path overhead for VC3 and uh, uh, VC4, we have similar bytes uh, uh, for uh, lower order for um, mm, uh, managing the VC11, VC12, uh, VC2 uh, kind of uh, virtual containers. So it provides error checking signal label and path status. Uh, this particular uh, uh, V5 byte, uh, which exists in the uh, uh, lower order uh, payloads. So this is the path overhead, uh, which will get added when we convert 
uh, from a container to virtual container say for example for um, uh, E12 so we have seen how uh, 2 Mbps signal gets converted to VC12 uh, so we had a, 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 a path overhead uh, to make it as a, a, a virtual container I mean this is the path I mean this is the overhead which gets added up for the lower orders so which will have uh, functions uh, for bit interlude parity which also uh, which will have a bit for indicating the remote error indication remote failure indication a signal label uh, within the uh, lower order uh, uh, mapping process and remote defect indication so there are definitions for uh, bits uh, within the v5 byte and these are all the alarms which get raised which we are going to di discuss in a separate session J0 uh, is the lower order part trace byte uh, this is similar to J0 uh, which we discussed for regional resection overhead J1 which we discussed for higher order path overhead this was this will uh, ensure the internet connection between transmitter and receiver but it is for lower order uh, paths lower order trains and K4 byte is similar to what we discussed for K1, K2 and K3 uh, K1, K2 for multiplex section overhead uh, it protects multiplex section and uh, K3 uh, for APS signaling for the higher order path uh, uh, and similarly K4 is used for APS protection for VC11 and VC12 N2 is same as uh, N1 we discussed for higher order path so this is the tandem connection for uh, lower order path so the uh, same as uh, N1 this will provide the tandem connection uh, while uh, lower order paths are uh, traversing in multi operators domains <laughs> 